Tom Vilsack, the unelected head of the U.S. Department of Agriculture, is calling for coexistence between biotech genetically modified organisms, GMO, and non-GMO natural plants. The USDA has jurisdiction over whether a plant is safe to grow and will not contaminate other plants through cross-pollination. Genetically modified organisms are created by artificially crossing two or more life forms, sometimes using a virus to accomplish this. These new life forms may then be patented. Approximately 75% of the American diet is comprised of GMO food. The FDA's jurisdiction is over the human health safety of GMO plants, and the EPA has jurisdiction over environmental safety of pesticides and herbicides. Both the FDA and the EPA allow the product manufacturer to submit their own safety studies for approval. The USDA's sub-agency, the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, or APHIS, identifies GMO plants as plant pests. GMO manufacturers petition APHIS if they believe their products are not plant pests. APHIS is required to analyze the impact of GMO plants on the environment, and they usually file a brief environmental assessment. If APHIS determines the seeds can significantly affect the environment, they must complete a detailed Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS. GMOs have been proven to contaminate natural plants through cross-pollination that spreads and turns plants into superweeds. Organ damage and sterility have been linked to GMOs in lab animals. The USDA and the Alfalfa Supreme Court Case Alfalfa is used for human consumption and cattle feed. If GMO alfalfa were unleashed, it could contaminate organic alfalfa and present a major problem, especially for organic dairy farmers. APHIS failed to perform an Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, on GMO alfalfa before deregulating it. Deregulation means unlimited planting without restrictions. After APHIS completed a draft of an environmental impact statement that determined GMO alfalfa as unlikely to pose a plant pest risk, Geertsen Seed Farm responded by complaining that incorrect conclusions were drawn from the data by APHIS. A federal court placed a nationwide injunction against planting GMO alfalfa. Monsanto responded by suing Geertsen Seed Farm and the case went to the Supreme Court. Despite thousands of lawsuits against Monsanto, this was the first GMO case that the Supreme Court had ever agreed to hear. The Supreme Court managed to avoid ruling on any contamination safety issues. The Supreme Court sidestepped making any meaningful safety decisions. The Supreme Court ruled to lift the national injunction on GMO alfalfa because it was deemed as being too broad. The Supreme Court collects its paycheck from the federal government. The USDA's latest environmental impact statement offers a third alternative to regulating or deregulating the crop. The alternative is to impose geographic restrictions or to isolate GMO crops to allow coexistence. Economics play a part in the coexistence scheme. The USDA's final environmental impact statement admits that natural alfalfa can be contaminated. Biotech corporations will try to require farmers to follow planting rules to keep the contamination under 0.5 percent. Farmers who plant GMO alfalfa must sign a Monsanto Technology Stewardship Agreement, or MTA, according to the final environmental impact statement. It is interesting to note that the Western Organization of Resource Councils reports that because Monsanto patents its genetically engineered seeds, farmers who purchase Roundup Ready alfalfa seeds will have to sign a technology agreement that shields Monsanto from liability for accidental contamination or any other problems its product may cause. The effect of these agreements is to pit farmer against farmer and to let Monsanto off the hook for any economic damage caused by its product. Motives. Tom Vilsack's advocacy of coexistence has been interpreted by some as a concession to protect non-GMO plants, but his intentions were revealed when he said, we also have companies and researchers who have devoted significant resources to developing safe products that can help us meet our food production and security needs, but find themselves instead fighting in the courts. 
And lastly, our regulatory system has been strained by these legal challenges. We shouldn't let decisions regarding coexistence be set by litigation. An alternative interpretation of Vilsack's comments is that the USDA could be protecting biotech's special interests and wants to dispense with pesky environmental impact statements and avoid lawsuits and keep the courts out of regulatory policy. 1. The USDA co-owns the Terminator gene patent with Monsanto. F. William Engdahl, author of Seeds of Destruction, revealed this in 2006. The Terminator gene makes seeds sterile after one season, so seeds must be repurchased for each new planting. This could also result in total food control and could wipe out plant species and food monocultures. Reason number two, Tom Vilsack is biotech friendly. As governor of Iowa, he blocked local communities from regulating where GMO crops could be grown. He was the founder of the Governor's Biotechnology Partnership and was named Governor of the Year by a biotech lobby group. Reason number three, 75 members of Congress requested that Vilsack and the USDA allow limited planting of GMO alfalfa, so he's being politically pressured. The top names on the letter requesting limited planting are Lynn Jenkins, Wally Herger, and Joe Courtnoy, as well as key House leaders and committee members. And reason number four, Tom Vilsack and the USDA are concerned about appeasing stakeholders. Stakeholders are shadowy entities that combine efforts toward regulatory influence. Stakeholders may include corporations, individuals, lobbyists, non-governmental organizations, etc. In conclusion, Tom Vilsack is convinced that GMOs are safe and he also has many reasons for his convictions. It remains to be seen whether the USDA's final environmental impact statement will be challenged in the courts. Again, it is clear that Tom Vilsack opposes the court's involvement in deregulation policy. Could this mean that the USDA and the government will create legal loopholes to deregulate GMO seeds in support of their business partner, Monsanto? Is the USDA planning an end run around the judicial system, looking for an exemption from being challenged in the courts? You decide. What is the motive? Money and power? Well, it's not very original, but it certainly is popular in politics. Or is the government's support of biotech and their business partner Monsanto more sinister and part of the Agenda 21 depopulation program? Find out more about Agenda 21 by reading the Food and Depopulation series of articles at MorphCity.com. The links are contained in the description box below, as well as the link for the transcript of this video and research sources.